Okay, so we are live. This is Stand Up Fight Back. So we do our usual thing here, Miguel, where we just wait. So do you prefer assembly member or assembly man, <laughs> Santiago? Assembly member, uh, Miguel's fine too, you know? I mean, Miguel, okay. Well, yeah, we want to, you know, you have a title, so we'd like to respect that as well. <laughs> <laughs> But okay, well, so we have some viewers on now, so why don't we get started? Hi, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. You're watching our weekly Sunday show. Usually we do it at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings, but this week we have a very special guest, and it was easier for them to join us in the evening, and we're very happy to accommodate. So you're watching Stand Up, Fight Back, where we discuss strategy and analysis for the progressive movement. We simulcast on Facebook and YouTube, so please share us with your friends, your family members, your next door neighbors, your dog, and please subscribe and turn on <laughs> notifications so you don't miss an episode. I'm Margo Pius, I'm scientist, engineer, and occasional journalist, and this is my wonderful co-host over here somewhere on one of these sides, <laughs> Carlos Marroquin, the amazing grassroots organizer. Today we have a really cool guest, he's the assembly California Assembly Member Miguel Santiago of District 53. And he was kind enough to send us a little biography, so we'll share that with you now. The Assembly Member was elected in November 2014. And as I said, he represents California's 53rd Assembly District. And this district includes downtown Los Angeles and Boyle Heights and the surrounding areas. In the, legislature, he ha in the legislature, he has fought to help unhoused Californians build affordable housing, protect communities from pollution, and he's led the effort to make community college free. That's an amazing effort, so thank you on that part. He's also fought to establish public banks in California, and this would help, this would provide opportunities and help economically disadvantaged communities and small businesses in the state. Now, he's been very busy during the pandemic. From what I hear, he has helped distribute thousands of free meals. He's fought to protect renters from evictions, and he's currently working to pass AB 1400, which would bring single payer health care to California. No small feat. He currently serves as chair of the Communications and Conveyance Committee and sits on the Health, Higher Education, Public Safety and Utilities and Energy Committees here in California. So thank you, Assembly Member, for joining us. Carlos, let's turn it over to you. Please tell us more about our guest. Yes, well, this is a special guest for us. Uh, and thank you, uh, Assembly Member Miguel, for being with us today. But uh, my days with uh, the Assembly Member goes back a few years and and i gotta tell this story and i know we're taking a long introduction here but it's one that deserves to be in, introduced in this manner um back in the day you know work was uh, with foreclosure we we're helping countless of families that were losing their homes to the banks and, and that fight i gotta tell you with the occupied movement was very important but it was a hard one because there was very little resources available for us who were doing the, the foreclosure, anti-foreclosure work. And, you know, one of the things that I always tried to do was establish relationships with um, elected officials. And I got to tell you, it was very, very hard to do that. Uh, politicians would literally run away from us because nobody wanted to be associated themselves with the Occupy movement. But lo and behold, one day I received a call and it was uh, the assembly member, Miguel Santiago. And he wanted to have a meeting with me. And, and that really surprised me because as I say, politicians used to run away from the occupiers. They didn't want nothing to do with them. You know, they were viewed in a certain way, but not so with Miguel Santiago. We, he reached out, we met, and, and then we have established a relationship of, um, a professional relationship of trust where he knows that I represent the people that I work in behalf of the people. And, and he, as a legislature, plays a super important role because I'm able to, to reach out to him. When there's issues, when there are concerns in the community, uh, Assembly Member Miguel Santiago has always been there addressing those issues and take, p paying attention to the things that we care about, listening you know, to our concerns. So um, Assembly Member, Member Miguel Santiago, thank you for being with us. 
uh, you're a special friend to me because uh, you have uh, stepped out, out of your comfort zone. You reached out and we have worked together in many, many issues. Uh, at the same time, you know, we respect each other's um, opinions and, and politics, but uh, you have been there. Thank you so much, Miguel. Welcome. No, well, thank you both for having me on. I'm, I'm very honored uh, to be on. So thank you very much. So let's get to it. I've been waiting all, all day. This is awesome. It's exciting. Great. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background, how you became Absolutely. an assembly member? Thank you for that. Well, you know, I used to be on the LA Community College Board uh, before I came to the legislature. And I'll start off there and then tell you uh, why that was really important to me, because I was uh, one of those kids that didn't do so good uh, in high school. And, you know, na naturally, uh, it wouldn't surprise you that, that I, uh, my parents, uh, um, you know, struggled economically. And my, my story is not unique. It's, it's kind of like the American dream in, in the way it happens now. You know, my parents came from Mexico. Um, they didn't have, at that time, they called it a green card, which we now know is, you know, the step before you get citizenship. And w growing up was was extremely difficult. And uh, in high school, um, we had to get jobs uh, to help our parents out. And um, and so uh, community college was really the opportunity for me to advance my education. And um, when a seat opened up on the LA Community College Board, uh, I went for it because I, I thought it was incredibly important. Uh, that an institution like uh, the community colleges in Los Angeles, uh, some of you might recognize those names like East LA College, LA Trade Tech, LA City, all the way down to Harbor Southwest, uh, needed somebody with experiences like me, uh, that shared experience of, of most um, most of the students that served. Uh, and I knew, how, I knew how important it was and how impactful uh, it could be to somebody's life to have that chance, that second chance at education. And we knew that this was a place and point in time uh, where we help people. And so I went to the seat and was, uh, was fortunate enough to be there. When the seat opened up for the assembly, it uh, gave me the opportunity just to continue that sort of work uh, where I could take the passion and what I've learned at the community college level uh, and the district that I sought to represent and what we can do for people uh, who were the, the least among us, meaning those who are uh, immigrants who are poor. And I'll tell you a little bit more about my district as we move along. Uh, but I really want that opportunity and it, it makes sense why I continue to fight for free education and debt-free education. When I got in the legislature, we were successful. We got two years of free community college. Uh, now the the uh, Biden administration is pushing to get com free community college across uh, the country. But really, we were ahead of the curve here in California. And you know, we're also trying to make CSUP. So all of you who are listening out there, I hope you stick along for the ride because that's the next step. Uh, and tackling how high how high of a cost it is to go to college, uh, but look for me the things that impacted me when I was a child and still continue uh, to weigh on me and and what I think about when, when I when every time I walk into the Capitol it is people who are hardworking uh, who came to this country or people who struggle no matter where they came from um, because this fight uh, for income inequality is real. And, and we know that even more now during the pandemic where you have about 164, 165 billionaires in the state of California. And they have made so much more money than we could ever, ever imagine. Uh, while there's still about 5 million people, if you, if you could even put your head around that, 5 million people in the state of California who live in poverty, uh, who make less than 25,000 for a family of four. Uh, four. And when, you, when wow. you think about those numbers, it's got to give us the. It's got to give us the reason we want to fight. Here's something else, Carlos. The, car, uh, the district that you and I uh, live in, there's about a, a little bit over uh, 150 thousand people who are at that poverty uh, number. Uh, to think that there's over 153 thousand people uh, in our district who a family of four lives on 25 thousand or below. We are one of the poorest districts in the state of California, and, and that reflects what we fight for. Uh, to be quite frank with you, and and I mean, you could imagine from there, even if you were making fifty thousand for a family of four, those are still poverty wages according to me. But because we've got to follow a number that has already been set through government, I mean, could you imagine one hundred fifty-three thousand people uh, in our district alone uh, earn twenty-five thousand? What percentage uh, of the district does that make up? Uh, a little over thirty percent, close to about thirty-three, thirty-four uh, percent. The average in LA County is probably. <laughs> It, it's really high, actually. Uh, it, it's really extremely high. Uh, and the rest of the district 
uh, is, is significantly challenged too as it comes to as it comes to income. So we fight for different things that other people fight for in districts, right? I mean, and the challenges like, uh, and I'm going to get into this a little bit more, but um, you know, we have rule challenges in our backyard uh, when it comes to um, corporate pollution. Um, that we've seen and i'd love to get into that a little bit, but i want to give you an idea of what moves me every morning when i think that there are little kids uh who have nothing to eat or go hungry and during this pandemic we've seen it carlos you should talk about the great work you do over at, uh <laughs> urban partners we, no, i mean it's pretty amazing it, right pretty i wanted amazing. to get because uh, look you know since the pandemic um you have been around you immediately stepped in and offered your support for urban partners los angeles you know you came out there and you have visited us multiple multiple occasions and you have connected me also uh with with uh, resources for the community uh and one of the things that really impressed me because this last time actually that, that you came and and sometimes uh some of the people i talk with don't realize that i'm paying attention and and i <laughs> go well you know because there's so much need and so many things sure. happen but in conversations that I usually hold, I, 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 I'm very attentive as to uh, the mannerism of people and the things that they say. But uh, I noticed something about you this last time that you came, and it was on, on actually on um, Valentine's Day. You came to bring some flowers for some of uh, the people that were re uh, receiving groceries. But you, you were really struck by the amount of people that were in need, and you kept repeating that to me. You say, man, the people are really hurting out there. Look at these people, you know, you keep saying that. So that stuck with me because that's really important when our elected officials are in touch with people on the ground. Because I think that that really changes you, the way you, you move to bring better policies. Yeah, well, look, I mean, when the pandemic hit, we've always known that our district uh, was incredibly um, poor, right? And um, it has its challenges. Uh, and we visited food banks and we called everybody we possibly could to stay open and help with groceries, giveaways. And we never thought that we'd be sitting here a year later still having this conversation um, about the impacts of COVID, right? I think at the beginning, everybody thought it, it wouldn't, you know, wouldn't last a year, certainly not going into our second year. Uh, but what we saw across the district, and we basically dropped everything we were doing and focused on the most immediate need in our district, which was food insecurity, uh, the ability to keep a roof over over their heads, um, and, and bridging the digital divide because those those were some of the most pressing concerns. I mean, there's a lot of pressing concerns when it comes to uh, working class communities like the ones I represent. But uh, food insecurity was one at the top of the list, and the ability to make rent. And um, we partnered up with nonprofits all across the district, and, and basically uh, huddled to try to make sure people had groceries. Um, so they could feed their kids and themselves. We literally were dropping off food at uh, seniors who couldn't leave their homes. But the fights have never ended. Really, after that, it was the fight to get COVID testing in our communities. Now it's the fight to ensure uh, that vaccines uh, are done in an equitable way. Uh, so the fight's never going to end here. And then some people want to talk about going back to the norm. Uh, we always remind them the norm wasn't working for 99% uh, percent of Californians. We are not going back to the norm. We want better than where we were before. Uh, as it relates to, uh, to to equality across the board, um, doesn't right. matter what we're talking about. We got to improve the systems, right? And I think this is why, uh, you know, we've been talking about uh, healthcare for for a while, for for years now. But I think this is part of the. Correct me if I'm wrong. This this, this must be part of the reason why you uh, decided to help lead the effort in in bringing single payer. Uh, yeah. Why are some of the things that that, that really strike you? <laughs> well, look, we've got to tell people, if not now, when? <laughs> I mean, we have a global pandemic centered, centered around a health crisis. So if not now, when? I mean, this is the time that we need to step up, roll up our sleeves and get this done. And we've seen that since the beginning of the pandemic. Healthcare, healthcare is a human right, and it is absolutely critical and one of the most important um, one of the most important challenges of our lifetime. And while corporations continue to make billions of dollars, people get left behind when it comes to uh, high quality healthcare. And that's why we're stepping up on this. So look, single payer, the conversation about getting single payer uh, has been around for some while. I mean, some of us, uh, you folks involved have been doing this for 20, 25 years where 
it, it was foreign to people. Uh, I remember when I got out of college and I was a young activist and we were going to the Democratic Party talking to them about uh, doing single payer. Uh, not only did they laugh us out, they, they didn't understand what we were talking about, which was high quality health care for all. And guess what? But no cost, right? I mean, it could, it could be done. That's what we're paying for right now anyways. Uh, but we're, but during now we decided to introduce uh, a single payer bill in the state of California, uh, and it's uh, Mr. Oshkara, uh, Mr. Alex Lee, and myself, and we've got a number of uh, co-authors, a significant amount, uh, to do that now. I mean, this is the time, and uh, I'll keep telling people, if not now, when? Yeah, you, uh, this is such an important topic because, um, like, as you said, we're in the middle of a pandemic. This is a health yeah. crisis, and you brought in some. You brought up so many issues right now, like in terms of bringing equitable access to vaccines in terms of having yeah. a roof over your head in the middle of a pandemic, uh, access to health care, and uh, as, as you just touched on this, this AB 1400 bill, but I, I want to just, I, I really, I want to get more into this, but, but I, I also want to hear if possible, maybe we can touch on a little bit going back to the, the housing crisis, the housing situation here, uh, because I know that rent relief is is a big issue for you as well, mm -hmm. trying to make sure that people can pay their bills. And so we had this big national discourse, mm -hmm. I guess, in Congress and passing the COVID relief, and there's some moratorium in there, but, but what else is happening? What else can be done here within the state for, for people in your district sure. for that 30% or so who are, are at poverty wages? Yeah. And in terms of the rent. You, correct. But even if you're making 50, uh, a family of, of four, you're not doing, I mean, you're doing better than the 25, but but you're still struggling. I mean, let's, let's be real with the high cost of rent uh, in the state of California, particularly the Los Angeles region. Uh, people are struggling. People are struggling. So here's what we did last year, right? And it really was uh, one of those uh, real fights in the in the legislature to even put a moratorium down uh, on evictions, but we did. You know, we, we were able to do a um, urgency clause, which means expedited process through the legislature, got to the governor's desk last year in September. Uh, you all might recall, I think I was calling Carlos and others to help us lobby for votes uh, because it was hard to get out. Uh, and, and this year, we extended that moratorium uh, and, and we will do so again. We extended that moratorium. But there's a couple key things there. And, and this is really important. Uh, for tenants, well, let me, uh, the ability to not get kicked out uh, of your apartment exists. Uh, and the state of California helps those who are the uh, lowest income earners uh, to access uh, that 25% uh, so that a, a landlord would not kick them out uh, once the eviction is over. And likewise, landlords have the ability uh, to collect on that 80% uh, from us and would, and would have to kick in the 20%, uh, which would allow the tenants uh, to, to uh, be debt free uh, from that cost. So we put a number of provisions in there, but what is key, what is absolutely key for anybody listening here is that there are rights uh, to tenants that you cannot get evicted under certain conditions uh, and that there may be ways uh, to eliminate that debt uh, altogether. Um, I, I, I'll put my plug in for a number of state resources and local resources, really, uh, that are available for people uh, to be able to access because one of the challenges to uh, having resources out there and passing laws. And, and you know, we say this in our office all the time, right? If a tree falls in the middle of a forest and nobody uh, hears or saw it, uh, does it matter? And the answer is no. So we want to make sure that people understand that what we've got uh, will help uh, residents. Right. Uh, Miguel, I'd like to follow up a little bit on that because I understand this particular class, crisis with housing is very delicate and it's really huge. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about millions of people affected. And some people have not been able to go back to work. Right now, I know that there may be some money coming into the states because of the COVID-19 uh, uh, yeah. that uh, the president signed. Now, what we are hoping, and, 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 and enlighten us, because this is, this is your world. This is where you operate. There is money coming into the states. Is there, how, what, what are the necessary things that we can do to support money coming in for rent relief? Because sure. it well, 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 yes, and, and absolutely. Look, and we fought look side by side. Uh, there may there was a a large coalition that we put together uh, in the LA County area, now across statewide, that was asking for five billion dollars of rent relief 
for those who need it for most in the state of California. So we're not going to give up that fight. Let me be very, very clear. We're going to fight for each and every tenant because we strongly believe that everybody should have a roof over their head, period. So let, let me start off with that. We're not giving up on that. I just wanted to maybe state, state the facts of what we had out there. So what we were able to do uh, in, in the last uh, um, actions that we took on this at the be uh, beginning of February, I believe, uh, we put through uh, $2.6 billion uh, that part of that goes to the locals and part of that goes through a state program uh, that will offer the the um, the, the uh, rent relief that we just talked about. Now, let, let me be very clear that we started off at the beginning of the year uh, asking for $5 billion. And there's a significant amount of legislators who uh, back our efforts and are joining forces with us. So we're still going to continue to fight for more. Now, there may be monies in the federal, um, the last uh, uh, stimulus package, uh, I, I believe there could be close to about $2 billion, but whether or not there's money in there, we're still going to continue to fight because people have to have a roof over their head. And it's a human right. That's the bottom line. So so the bottom line is what I, would, I would ask folks who are listening, I would ask them to kindly you know, call their representatives and ask them to support an effort uh, to make sure uh, that we get the $5 billion in rent relief. Um, and and to support all tenants' uh, rights bills that we're putting up. And we're going to come back for more. I mean, this is not the end of this, and we're going to fight extremely hard to make sure this gets done. So thank you for that question. Yeah, I, I think that yep. part of the important so, here will be to uh, to make sure and that there is more to come. Oh, uh, no, Margaret, absolutely. We're not stopping at that, believe me. All right, Margaret? Oh, oops, hang on a second there. Oh, okay, yes. So this, yes, is really important. I mean, what else What else can be done for, for people? Because as you mentioned, this, you don't want to return to the normal that was before, right? Nope. Because that normal wasn't great. There were a lot of people already suffering with, with uh, mm -hmm. jobs that, that don't pay well, lack of access to healthcare, good housing. So, can you maybe share with us a vision of what you would like to see different coming out of the pandemic to, to help the people within your district? And of course, helping people in your district ultimately helps people across the state as well. Sure. So uh, could you could you share us a little bit about what you think that this, this kind of better California and ultimately absolutely. better United States would look like? No, absolutely. Look, if it's one thing we learned in the pandemic is that the income inequality conversation we had has has ag has worsened the situation, uh, and the and if you were hurting before, you're hurting a lot more now. So we don't want to go back to the norm. No way, no how. We're not going to accept that. That's the bottom line. But I think key to that really is single payer, and I know and 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 that really has to be front and center of this conversation because this and I've said this before, and I think we've all agreed here. This this pandemic uh, has shown. Uh, has shown that our healthcare system is not working for people from from who gets COVID. And we know that, that where there's valleys, there are peaks um, in order to get an average number. And obviously the communities that we represent of color um, or working class communities have been the peaks uh, while affluent communities have not felt the, the COVID impacts uh, that we have felt. So key to changing the way the world looks as, as, we, as we fight for a better than normal situation is going to be having single payer. I mean, this is critical to it. I'll go back to that. And we've got to figure out a way that we do systems that are new. Like I know we're pushing on public banks with a lot of folks here are, are helping us. We got public banks done a couple of years ago for local municipal banks. It'll take a few years before uh, they're set up locally, but we're also going to fight for public bank across the state of California. Uh, which I believe some of you all are involved because this is absolutely critical that we have a financial system that helps people. Uh, and, and, and instead of Instead of making a extraordinary amounts of profit, uh, we've said this before, we'll continue to say it, but those who are billionaires have made an enormous amount of money uh, during this pandemic. It's, it's bizarre to think so, right? But there are still about 164, 165 billionaires in the, in the state of California alone. Uh, and there's a significant amount of people uh, who, who earn over a million dollars and they've done a lot better. Uh, and, and the reason I say that is because we've got to tackle this issue of income inequality absolutely and head on. There's got to be a better way to do this. And when we think about when we step out of this, key, key to that as well has got to be solving uh, the affordable housing crisis and the tenant protections uh, and, and uh, rental assistance that we need for people. Because people cannot continue to live uh, when they're spending 60, 70% of their paycheck 
uh, on rent. It, there's just no way to live that way. I'm sorry, yeah, I uh, cut you off there. Oh, no, no, not at all. Uh, so is, is there any chance that, that maybe the legislature here in California can pass some kind of billionaire tax legislation, increase taxes on billionaires? Because there's also been a, you know, a lot of discussion about that on the national level, especially with Bernie Sanders' campaign and Elizabeth Warren's campaign. I mean, seeing that we have so many rich people in this state, can we oh, at yeah. least, you know, take 0.01% of what some amount at, uh, um, of whatever that, you know, rich people buy and sell, like a lot of it is you know, trading stocks and stuff. But, you know, can we do that? Can we do that here in California? Well, we're trying. If you, rem if you recall last year, uh, we introduced uh, the, the first millionaires tax in the state of California. Uh, and we did that with a coalition of legislators. Uh, and we were successful of uh, raising that conversation about income inequality and having that conversation about about people paying their fair share. Um, and we reintroduced it. Uh, we'll go public on it pretty soon. Uh, and then in fact, tomorrow we're, we're holding a press conference in Sacramento uh, on the wealth tax. There are two measures that are out there. It's uh, the millionaire's tax that myself, and it would not surprise you, Mr. Oshkala, Mr. Lee, uh, and, and others, the same, the same uh, group of people are fighting extremely hard for that. Uh, the millionaire's tax, and would not surprise us that we're also going to be fighting for a wealth tax, uh, and that one will be uh, announced tomorrow, I believe, at about noon, uh, with a coalition of legislators as well and groups uh, who are who are going to be fighting for that. Absolutely, I mean, if we were to if we were to implement the millionaire's tax that we uh, fought for last year and we'll continue to fight for this year, and we hope that everybody on this call joins us, and we hope uh, that you contact uh, your legislators and, and your local representatives and say we've got to do this. Uh, and we hope um, that you will uh, officially sign on as, as a supporter and help us to advocate. Um, we could be raising anywhere between uh, seven to eight billion dollars. I mean, seven to eight billion dollars to help pay uh, for for uh, rent subsidies, to help pay for affordable housing, to help uh, to help de eliminate student debt. I mean, these are things that are real. Uh, food insecurity. Often, in the legislature we hear there's not enough money for all the good programs that we want to do. Hey. I got one idea on how to get a lot of money. I bet you almost everybody who's listening here thinks it's a thinks it's a decent idea. I mean, multi billionaires in the state of California. And good God. Yeah, they need to pay the first share for sure. Uh, Miguel, uh, a couple of years ago, I mean, there was the big fight, uh, Dakota Pipeline, and all, following all that, and a lot of uh, cities were um, taking their money out from their big banks. Uh, so. We had the, the public banking movement uh, rising even to levels that we had not seen. I spoke to you about public banking when I first met you, you know, and we had a, a you know, back and forth, but a lot has changed since then. And, and you led the effort for AB uh, 857, correct? Which allowed mm -hmm. public banking to, uh, in California, that was signed by the governor. Tell us yeah. a little bit. Well, I give credit where credit is due, right? I mean, and um, and you were a key part of that, uh, as was uh, at Trinity Tran uh, from the uh, Public Bank Alliance and the um, and, and really, uh, to be fair, the movement uh, that I saw building in Los Angeles uh, to pass uh, it, the measure to get public banks uh, it, it's, uh, to get public banks in the, in the Los Angeles area, and. And you know, but I also want to give credit to Mr. Chu uh, in San Francisco, uh, who also led with us, and, and a lot of legislators who really stuck their neck out and fought one of the toughest uh, corporate entities that we <laughs> that could ever hire lobbyists in the state of California. And I also want to say this, and this is absolutely key when we talk about a people-powered movement. Let me say this again: this was a people-powered movement. And this is key because there was zero, 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 nada, cero, lobbyists <laughs> working for the public bank movement. Not a single paid lobbyist. Yet thousands and thousands of grassroots activists and leaders got together and pulled something off in the state of California that has never been seen anywhere across the country. Got a public bank's bill through the legislature and it got signed by Governor Newsom. 
to this day, people are still talking about that. Let me repeat this one more time. And, 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 <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna say this because how critical it is to understand the power of people organizing and the power of advocacy. Zero paid lobbyist. It was a full grassroots movement that got public banks done in the state of California. From the public banking alliance um, it, to every single uh, um, local uh, banking, um, public banking organization, to the Democratic Party, uh, to different clubs, organizations. I mean, literally, there was a movement built there that has not been seen. Now we're seeing uh, public banks le uh, conversation or legislation coming from the U.S. Uh, um, and now we're seeing, and now we're also uh, seeing uh, legislation to be unveiled um, by Congress member um, AOC and others. Uh, so I think this is a movement to a large degree that we could say uh, started with with, with, with uh, the public banking movement here in California. Now I also will say. I get credit where credit is due. Um, the 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 conversation was new to me, um, but it made a lot of sense. How about a bank uh, that works for the public interest uh, instead of instead of corporate profit? And when we went back and you know, we studied it, we looked at it. Bank of North Dakota did very well, even during the last economic depression. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it makes absolute sense. I could talk about this forever because I, I absolutely <laughs> love the concept. We've got it done. And then this year, I would ask all y'all to support our uh, state bank uh, public effort, uh, public banks effort again. Uh, this time, we've got a larger coalition, and we want to get a state bank done that could do the business uh, with local municipal banks as they get set up. We've really got an opportunity here to get this done, to bank the unbanked, uh, where 80% of the unbanked uh, makes under the minimum wage. Uh, or so, so we've really got an opportunity to bank the unbanked, and we're hoping that um, you'll continue to join us in that effort. I mean, yo, that's, the, that's amazing. Yeah, one of the things that really impressed me on this is the collaboration between the uh, uh, political people, organizations, yeah. grassroots. You know, that's how we win. And I know that uh, some of the issues that, that we have been fighting and pushing for are hard issues. It's nothing easy. A lot of the issues that we involve with, we're going against big money. But being able <laughs> to put a bank against the most powerful institutions in the world. That's something to be said, and I gotta say it because you know I remember that call that you gave me. You know, I think it was almost in the middle of the night. You say I'm ready to do this, you know, and <laughs> that's what I people that I associate with me because a lot of people want to see changes take place, and and sometimes we we are not patient, but this conversation sometimes takes time, and and who knows at the right time. Here it comes, you know, and, but it does take a leader, someone that navigates us through the waters to get it done. So that's what I'm hoping to see with healthcare for all as well. Yeah, and I think we've yeah, got a good- take this. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, finish your thought. Um, no, no, yeah. please. Oh, I was just gonna do a station break <laughs> and just remind everybody that they're watching Stand Up Fight Back and we have our, our guest today is assembly member Miguel Santiago. He's from California uh -oh, District. 53? 53. 53. Okay, uh, great. And uh, and and just to, to throw this out there because we're on the subject <clears throat> of public banking, Carlos, next week we are for sure having Public Banking Institute to come on. They're going to be joining us, members of the board and the founder of Public Banking Institute, Ellen Brown, will be with us. So we're really, really excited about this because we're going to continue this conversation that we're having with Miguel and how everything is connected and how many, so many people out there doing great work, you know, and the, the whole message today is, you know, don't get discouraged, you know, and make connections, develop relationships, just like I have with, uh, with assembly member Miguel Santiago. It's all about talking, you know, and sharing ideas and, 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 and really educate sometimes our, our uh, elected officials. Sometimes they want to do good things. It's just, they don't know, what all involves and and once they learn the issue they champions yeah yep. but let me tell you what's also important because the green new deal doesn't get done without public bank well that's one step towards getting public banks done so it means a lot to us to get this done if, you know so so we're going to fight extremely hard because we really believe in this but again people power movement works we got it done because people got together and organized 
Absolutely, absolutely. So now that we're at the bottom of this hour, let's switch now and let's talk about this healthcare for all legislation, Carlos and Miguel. I'm very excited to, to hear more about it. And Carlos, you want to kick us off on this? Yeah, well, you know, we this was recently introduced. I know that uh, the Nurses Union is really collaborating with this, yes. but involved in the leadership uh, of this bill and, and the organizing. Can you tell us a little bit on that? Sure. Well, look, th there is a significant amount of co-authors in the legislature. So for each and every single one of them, uh, you know, we want to give them a big round of applause and we really want to thank uh, Mr. Oshkalro's leadership and uh, Mr. Lee's leadership, Alex Lee up in Northern California, uh, who have really stepped up um, and, and we joined their efforts to make sure that that happens. And the bill's pretty simple, right? I mean, everybody here would agree that we need high quality health care for all, period. You know, wh whether you are undocumented, whether you're documented, um, whether you have pre-existing conditions or none, whether you are young or you are old, period. You need health care for all. And, and it does four uh, steps. Number one, it, it creates CalCare, and that's a single payer system. Uh, then we want to create a CalCare board that would for, for uh, that would manage and administrate. And, and then we want to make sure that we have healthcare providers working in the system. Uh, that means writing the rules and making sure what 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 they should earn, what they shouldn't earn. Uh, and, and then we want to make sure that we we go after the financing. So those are the steps, and it's going to be a rigorous uh, debate in the legislature for sure. Um, but at the end of the day, and I said this from the very beginning, and I, and and um, we're going to say it all the way through, that healthcare is a human right. I mean, that's the bottom line, and we're not going to we're not going to back down on that fight. And uh, and um, if not now, when? Well, we, we're in the middle of the uh, of uh, global health uh, crisis. I think the people are with us. Oh, I. I I think they are. I think nationally, Absolutely. percent of Americans want some form of single payer health care. So, I have two questions on this, Carlos and, and Miguel. What, my first one is, what is the the likelihood of passing this legislation in 2021? And also, uh, has there been a single payer legislation before in the in the assembly? Or, or in the state legislature yeah. in general? And, and if so, what, why do you think it failed then? And, and sure. how can you avoid failure now? No, those are very good questions. Carlos, you want to take the first crack? Or you want me to take the first crack? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sure. Now, yeah. um, since my time uh, uh, being involved, and I mentioned earlier about you know, single payer has been a long-term fight. Uh, back in the mid 2000s, there was, I believe it was, uh, uh, and if anybody catches, if anybody, uh, 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 catches me being wrong here, then, then I'm always open to being corrected, right? Uh, but I think it was uh, Senator uh, Sheila Kuehl, who now sits on the Board of Supervisors, who passed the first single-payer bill uh, back in the mid-2000s. Uh, and then it was followed up by um, Mark Leno from San Francisco, who I believe may have done it twice. Uh, and then um, Sen then Senator Ricardo Lara, uh, who passed one. Um, that one was stalled. Um, uh, I mean, it was a rigorous debate. Uh, it, and um, that's one that we've picked up now. Now, I think we really have a good opportunity uh, to pass it now. Now, one um, of the things that we need to, to, to uh, remind our people is that uh, sometimes bills are introduced. And, of course, all of, them, all, all of us want to see, you know, an end result, a good end result. But sometimes it doesn't happen. This is where we have to get creative and start looking for other ways to be able to, uh, to continue to push for this. We just don't give up and we cannot stay dwelling in the past. We got to move forward. Yeah, I'm going to um, I'm going to quote my friend uh, Oscar, uh, who says we're going to bring them to their senses, not to their knees. <laughs> he says that in every speech <laughs> when he talks about a uh, single pair, because it could be that kind of rigorous debate. And it will be it will be an emotional uh, debate and a fight in the legislature, no doubt. Uh, but what we've decided to do on this one is we're going to take the path of love. And we're going to embrace in conversations uh, and we're going to lead with our best policy arguments because we believe the people are with us. And we believe uh, that when our colleagues understand what we're trying to do, uh, that they're going to agree. It's just going to take some time. Look, when we did public banks, it took us a serious amount of time, uh, some uh, a lot more than others, to convince uh, folks about public banks because at that particular time, it was more of a new idea for people. and. 
they had some legitimate questions. You know, they asked uh, about the fiduciary responsibility of the board. They asked about the uh, the insuring uh, the public's dollars. They asked about liquidity. I mean, these are all legitimate questions that were asked, but we were able to pass it because we had the best answers. We also took an approach, if you recall, for all those who were involved, uh, we said we weren't going to slash the house and burn it, we, that we were going to we were going to show them uh, through our kind efforts. And we were successful in engaging people for, I mean, there was colleagues of mine who I spent 10, 12 hours in these conversations uh, week after week after week, and they ended up supporting it and we got it done. So this this bill here, it'll go before the health committee first, a uh, committee that I sit on. Um, and we're gonna engage all of our colleagues to ensure uh, that it keeps moving forward. Now we'll say this, we intend to pass it. Like, let's get that very, very straight. Uh, but just for education purposes, our legislative cycle is a two-year cycle. So sometimes, not this bill, we're going to make sure that we pass it this time, the same way that we did public banks. But to sometimes they'll do go for two years uh, because it is a two-year legislative session. Not this one. I'm making sure we're very clear about that. We're going to make sure we try to get this done the first year. Um, but look, I'll give you another example. It took me about three, four years to get free community college done because Folks didn't believe in it. Uh, you know, even the previous governor wasn't too hot on it. And when they understood the rationale why this was critical, we got a second year. Uh, and now we're talking about free CSU. So it's going to happen, folks. We just got to engage our That'd best be foot forward. Well, that, that would be the free CSU would be absolutely. Oh, we're going to. Yeah, we got the bill out there now. With, yeah. with health care, man, that would be such a game changer. And, and, and this is a, a side, just an aside, but because of the Obamacare, um, I was actually able to go back and do and study physics after I had gotten my my first degree in, in music, and I didn't I didn't have a job, I didn't have any income, so I was able to do the expansion, Medicare, Kate expansion, or I guess Medicare expansion. I was able to to get free healthcare in California, and that was such a relief because it's complicated to to come go back to school because of impacted mm -hmm. courses and stuff. So. Uh, having access to health care, having that freedom to not worry about your health, how you're going to pay for a bill while you're in school, while you're at a community college or, or school that doesn't provide health care or, or much of it. I mean, that's that really is a, is a, a load off of a young person or, or 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 a working person's, you know, somebody who has kids and is trying to, mm -hmm. to improve their life. This is a, this is so important for so many people in this state and and of course california is one of those states that changes other states when they when they do things yep. here so being able to get this legislation that you've introduced and you or co-sponsored is um it really it would be phenomenal if you could get it passed and get it through and get newsom to sign this we could really change a lot of lives so thank you for for that hard work yeah thank you just just my, yeah. my uh, thought there <laughs> What can uh, we expect this next few months with uh, with this bill, AB 1400? Uh, I know that locally we have some of the best advocates like Healthcare for All Los Angeles uh, mm -hmm. with Erica. Yes. You, know, you know some of these advocates. But what can we expect this next few months? Sure. Well, look, before we get the committee, we want to make sure uh, that we uh, move men build so that we have a louder voice as we make our policy arguments uh, and before uh, before our colleagues and before committees. We also wanna ask uh, grassroots leaders uh, like yourselves in the movement uh, to contact their legislators uh, and tell them that you support uh, AB 1400. If you don't remember the number, CalCare uh, works as well or you support single payer uh, because we need to make sure that people know that their constituents support it. And we're doing it uh, I'll remind everybody what Mr. Oshkara said, right? We're, we're not going to bring people uh, to their senses, not to their needs. We're going to do it as nicely uh, <laughs> and as peacefully as possible to explain to people that this is a really important issue. Um, and, and we're going to, and so I, I would say over the next couple of months, we're going to be reaching out and building a larger, a larger coalition uh, to ensure that this happens. Similar, that, similar as we did public banks, uh, where we started uh, with, with the Public Bank Alliance and, and really awesome people. If you have not, you are in for a treat. If you have not already heard some of these people next next week, in fact, I might want to tune in because I always enjoy uh, listening to, <laughs> listen to them talk and, and the way they organize is just phenomenal. We've never seen anything like that at the state capitol. Um, but, but the same way we're going to organize. Um, 
and, and key to that is going to be the nurses and key to that is going to be uh, the progressive movement. And, and then we've already seen, um, like, for example, you know, we always give credit where credit is due. Uh, the chair of the Los Angeles County Democratic Party, uh, Mr. Mark Gonzalez, uh, led the effort as a first county central committee to officially come on and support way in advance. And they did something that was kind of creative. They did the chairs challenge. And the chairs challenge was to ask all the rest of the county central committees to support it so that they, so that when, when folks are looking at their backyard, uh, that the Democratic Party locally now supports uh, these efforts. And so we're going to do a lot of movement building. Uh, and we're going to do, be doing a lot of conversations with our colleagues to to get the best legislation we possibly can uh, um, before people. And look, we'll be taking input too. I mean, let's not be, you know, it, it, kind of like when we did public banks, you know, Carlos and I and Trinity and others and Ben, and there's a lot of good people on that movement um, who debated back and forth, who Sheila from Northern California debated back and forth every single policy idea. So we'll be doing the same thing. Wow. So who, so who is the, who are the opposition? To, to this film. <laughs> Almost the entire healthcare industry. <laughs> it's more, uh, right? There's a lot of opposition, sister. <laughs> I mean, obviously, yes. Obviously, the I know, I know. I, just, I wanted to have some good fun. I... <laughs> Thank you for indulging me on that. I think it's important. People you know what to... I was going to say? Anybody who makes money off healthcare. <laughs> yeah. But we need to understand what the forces the oppositions are because. A lot of these forces, I know when I was fighting the banks, people saw it like, you know, something simple that you just go on and fight for a home and the bank just gives it to you. They don't, you know, they're going to fight tooth and nail for these things. They don't want to yeah. lose profits. They don't want to lose their profits. And, and that's the reality. And we need to understand no. that. In a capitalist society that's profit driven, that is the one thing they'll fight for. Absolutely. Profit over people every day, you know, is what they fight for. So okay, how about with you, no, go ahead. No, no, you put your first place. Well, I was I was gonna ask my question again. <laughs> but so who who is the, who are the opposition within the legislature, within California? You know, are, are there specific uh, groups within the Democratic Party or is it, are they just members of the Republican Party who are opposed to this? Are there particular uh, you know, industry advocates, uh, who are the people that, that the grassroots movement, that the organizers sure. should be going after, you know, with, sure. with love, of course. Sure. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad, you know, you asked me that question and we, we can, an and we can answer it. I just want to have some fun with it because it's like the minute we introduced it, the whole house lit up, right? Uh, it, it really did. I mean, the, the, yeah, the entire, entire capital community is really talking about this one, you know? And uh, they're seeing a millionaire's tax, they're seeing a wealth tax, they're seeing public banks, they're seeing single payer, uh, another, uh, th there's a number of other progressive legislation out there. And I think, you know, people are starting to see that uh, California's turned around and look, Bernie Sanders uh, won California. And I think that that gave a, a stronger uh, infrastructure to get uh, progressive things done in the state of California. Uh, and um, but, but, so, but first, let, let me say that that, and since I've been there, uh, single payer has not come to our house. And so we don't have a voting record on any of the members who are there. And that's also, that's also I mean, on the assembly side, that's also a good thing uh, because it gives us an opportunity to start uh, fresh in conversation with people. The first place we're gonna focus uh, is um, on the health committee because that's where we go um, in the assembly. We'll be going to the health committee. It's not, it's not gonna be a, a secret there. That's the first committee has to go through. Um, so we want to make sure the folks reach out uh, to the representatives and kindly just tell them, hey, I want to log on. You know, I want to I want to make sure that I'm counted as supporting this, you know, and we can get more information out to you folks. But um, uh, in terms of that, most of the opposition paid opposition is going to come from um, healthcare industry groups. So it's going to be from hospitals. Uh, there may or may not be some doc organizations because I mean, even even in that medical community, there are a significant amount of doctors who support uh, single payer. So there may be a split um, amongst there certainly insurance companies, um, certainly could be pharmaceuticals uh, and, and, and others within that healthcare industry. That's gonna be where the paid op um, uh, opposition will come from. Um, and like, like I said earlier, right? I mean, our first steps first is, is to make sure that we present our best argument uh, before the first committee. Um, and that's the way we did it um, when we did public names. You know, first steps first, which is the health committee. Right. And it's really important for to understand how the process works because it's not just saying 
well, you know, I'm gonna introduce a bill and 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 you know, uh, and now make people. There are a lot of oppositions. There are things that need to happen. There are sometimes uh, losses that we take and we have to regroup. You know, so the progressive movement is the same way. We need to un we need to to get ahead. We've gotten this far because we have managed to adjust ourselves. Uh, you are one of the perhaps few, a handful, maybe less, uh, assembly members that endorsed Bernie Sanders on 2020. <laughs> yeah. I had to say, I know our time is running out, but I had to bring that, bring that out. Uh, sorry, Margaret, I, I jumped on this one, but uh, tell us about that. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. Well, this is the right thing to do. The bottom line. I mean, I don't. There's not much to say about that one, right? <laughs> Look, it was, you know, the bottom line is he spoke to the he spoke to the needs of a district that I represent, and quite frankly, I think of most of California. I mean, who doesn't believe in a better healthcare system? Who doesn't believe in not burdening them down with 60, 70 percent of people's uh, paycheck uh, going to rent? Who doesn't believe in a in an education uh, that is debt free? I mean, I don't want to, you know, I, I, I want to say that in the simplest way, it's just the right thing to do. Great. Absolutely. Yeah, so, yes, we are we are running out of time. So I, I wanted to know if we could, for a brief moment, touch on climate change. How, how do, how do the two of you feel about that? Carlos, is it okay if I switch up the topic in the last few minutes? Okay, so... Yeah, so I know that there is nothing right now in the in this legislative cycle, this legislative cycle. Ooh, getting a little tongue tied. But at least from from uh, what uh, some of your folks told me from your office, that there's not a lot going on. And so I want to ask you why? <laughs> why is there not a lot going on with the yeah. climate well, in this look, cycle when uh, we are running out of time? Sure. No, there are there are some. Okay, most of the focus in the legislature currently has been around COVID. I mean, that's been the bottom line, and the things that we've detailed, uh, where everybody is desperately trying to figure out how to uh, make sure that EDD works, make sure that people are able able to pay their rents, make sure that we're trying to do healthcare, uh, make sure that we're trying to uh, um, help in every possible way during this uh, health pandemic. Now, locally, uh, we've got some local battles. Um, and, and, and if I can, Margaret, don't you allow me to maybe about a minute on this, you know, which is which yeah, is the absolutely. fight that we have uh, with Excite, which is the largest uh, corporate polluter that we have um, on the West Coast and happens to be here in our backyard. I mean, that really is the biggest fight to pollution uh, and closest in a very, very close, real challenge we have um, with our environment right in our backyard. And for that, we have introduced legislation and uh, we've done about 300 million already to clean up uh, that because it actually impacts people's lungs. Uh, we have a significant amount of higher percentage of asthma rates, uh, birth defects, cancer within the area. Uh, we're making a play for uh, more than uh, 540 uh, million uh, dollars to continue to clean that up. And it's been something uh, that has plagued our community for uh, over 40 or something years. And it was one of the number one priorities I had when I got in the legislature because uh, there is the big conversation about climate change and there's those conversations that specifically are in your backyard uh, that impacts thousands of people's health. Uh, in this case, it's 10,000 homes potentially. Um, and you multiply that by the amount of people that live there, it's a real fight locally. The climate change conversations that we've had in the state of California have been plentiful and we actually led the effort uh, uh, in, in a few years ago with SB 100, which I co-authored and Mr. Dillion did, uh, on the, did as from the Senate side, we're called for 100% renewable uh, energy by uh, 24, 2045. Uh, the governor's laid out a plan, which we are now working on as well, uh, to make sure um, uh, uh, electric vehicles and, and the uh, infrastructure is laid out across the state of California. Uh, likewise, there are also dollars in the state budget uh, to tackle like X sites across the state of California. It's about $300 million. Uh, dollars. And then one of the largest uh, climate change uh, uh, fights we, that we have is, real, is, is wildfire, uh, w which is um, which contributes uh, to the uh, to the pollution that we see. And um, it's not the conversation that that, that, um, that most are used to, but it really is uh, what, one of the largest polluters in the air. Uh, those are the fronts, some of the fronts that we, we've been tackling uh, this year. And then key to key to uh, to, to moving us. Uh, closer to a uh, Green New Deal is the conversation about public banks, uh, which is front and center 
uh, I believe in, in the fight to uh, uh, climate change in the, air, in the area. So there are plenty of conversations going on. And remember, implementing uh, some of these uh, some of these bills that we've had, like SB 100, that would seek 100% uh, renewable energy by 2045, are still things that we're continuing to work on. Okay. Okay. That's uh, Carlos. Do you have a? Uh, looks like maybe you have a question. Uh, or no, are I'm, you are you just totally enthralled with with Miguel's response? <laughs> with questions. Do you have any more you saw, uh, Margaret? Oh yes. Oh, I do. But I, I wasn't sure if you were about okay. to ask something. Go ahead, please. I, well, and by the way, thank you for having me on. on. This is so much fun. No, you oh, know. We, oh, thank you. And people need to know, you know, what happens behind the scenes because there's a lot of work that goes behind the scenes, especially with grassroots, the grassroots uh, movement and some of the people that are leading efforts, uh, you know, there are conversations that take place and, and we're constantly pushing, you know, for uh, elected officials to uh, to see what's happening on the ground. And, and you one of those people that, you know, was easily approached and uh, you have, we have maintained a good relationship where, you know, I can actually pick up the phone and call you and, and let you know some of the things that are happening uh and and this is good you know and i i hope that more more of that happens but i'm sorry i i jump into no, you no it's fine i don't know it's totally fine and thank you we, we're having a wonderful time having you on with us too so i i just want to just to to bring up uh, in terms of climate change in california what are when when will we see more legislation because as we know we mm -hmm. we are really running out of time in terms of trying to keep uh, the global temperatures down, and I mean, what can we do in terms of bringing uh, taking California off of oil dependency? What can we do about fracking? Mm -hmm. Is there any chance that we might see a ban on fracking anytime soon? Well, you know what? There is. Uh, there, 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 there is a Senate. Look like there is a Senate bill. Mm -hmm. Sorry, there was a little bit of delay there. I apologize. Oh no, no, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. No, there is a bill. Um. Uh. And the, and we've had a number of them uh, last year as well that have also been successful. Uh, I believe there is a uh, uh a, a bill to eliminate fracking that is coming from the Senate side, and hopefully we'll be able to to help it uh, push it through. And, and that's uh mm -hmm. that's coming from one of our colleagues in the Senate from uh, San Francisco. But I, but you know, I'll remind you the key to uh key to being uh fossil dependent uh sorry, sorry dependent is to make that we have electric vehicles and for that conversation we're, we're we will be diving into it during the budget process i think you may have already heard uh at the beginning of january we're looking at building the infrastructure across the state uh, and make it easier for people to own electric vehicles and i think that is a huge step when it comes uh to the fight against uh um, climate change great great well i don't want to uh, push too much on that, Carlos. No, no, you can. You should. Look, this is what we're here for. We're friends. I mean, this is Carlos what told me to be friendly. Carlos told me I need to be friendly. I, so oh. I don't want to offend you. I don't want to offend anybody. We we like you. Oh, <laughs> well, climate, no. you know, climate change is, is my is it my is my research and it's my like career focus. So I tend to to be like very quickly. Ours too. If you, take look, <laughs> if you take a look, look. If you take a look at our district, we're mostly imp impacted. We're landlocked against freeways. Uh, we're and um, and we're one of the heaviest polluted uh, areas in the state of California. Uh, in fact, we're we're making sure that we work on those things that impact our district. You know, w when we passed a couple of years ago, uh, AB six one seven, along with the cap and trade deal, that directly brings money into our district to fight climate change here at home, where where it's felt uh, in kids' lungs. So no, we're just as serious about it as as anybody else is. And we have a, and uh, the legislature takes it extremely serious. Yes. Okay. Well, I think that we're almost at the end of the hour here, but uh, Miguel, I, I, I just want you to know that uh, I personally thank you for the opportunity you have given me to uh, to be able to be at the table, uh, to bring issues to you and the connections that you have uh, brought in, you know, across the state mm -hmm. where you have introduced me to so many people uh so that we can help and, and push for a better california uh i'm saying this right now because i, I want to speak to my brothers and, and sisters in the progressive movement uh, and i understand the pain that a lot of them feel not and the frustration not being able to get things done sometimes after you know so much sacrifices but uh 
I can tell you this by experience with Assembly Member Santiago is that, you know, when we talk to each other, you know, when we put cards down, when we uh, reason and, 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 and firmly present our ideas, uh, I think that it breaks down that, that conception that people have that they're not listening. You know, I think it has to do with the approach. And this is why I say, let's be nice, you know, is because <laughs> look, we got four years of, of, of somebody yelling at us on Twitter and everything else. You know, we don't need that. What we need is, is to be able to reason together, to, to bring people to their senses. I like that a lot, you know? That's and, Mr. And, Oscar said that. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I thought it was. You know, we have, what we <laughs> have now is, is a, a, an, a, an ability to be able to express one another, you know, and bringing the, the, the issues and the views that we have and hopefully find solutions. You know, we are in a, in a very serious time right now when people are hurting out there. And we got to do everything possible to bring solutions to the people, you know, and that may take us, you know, coming to the table and, and asking to have meetings with our representatives and, and, and being professional and being smart and present these ideas because a lot of times they like those ideas and they want to be able to, to work with us and work with you. Mm -hmm. So I just had to say that to, to our people. Uh, you know, I love the movement. I, I love the the issues that we all fighting for. And I love the leadership that many of you uh, have uh, expressed. Uh, so thank you. And thank you, Miguel, for uh, giving me that opportunity to work with you so that we can help other people. Well, thank you both for your amazing leadership and certainly everything that, that you, you know, both of you have gotten accomplished. I really got to thank the progressive movement uh, and, and the people power that it brings behind it because, um, because you, you've been instrumental in helping to get good things done. Uh, for the 99% of Californians uh, who don't have the wealth and power to quarantine on a yacht. Right. Well, thank you so much, Miguel. Thank you for being with us today. Carlos, do we, shall we do final thoughts now? Uh, yes. Uh, I just say what I needed to say, and that, that was part of the, the, uh, the reason why we wanted to have uh, our uh, Miguel Santiago with us. And I think that... Uh, it is critical if uh, any other legislatures are, are, are listening in. I encourage you to reach out to your grassroots leaders. Uh, there has been quite a few that have reached out and we are able to come to the table. We're able to express what's happening in our communities and our neighborhoods. And, and a lot of them are listening. And that's why I'm excited because a lot of representatives are listening and, and, and they they actually reaching out to us. How much better when we start reaching out to them and say, I would like to have a, a cordial meeting. You know, this is the people that I represent. And, and I, we're going to start seeing better results. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, I want to make sure we engage at some point in time that uh, you all uh, join our, our efforts in um, changing our criminal justice system. Because we've got a number of uh, legislation that we've worked on over the years. And um, this year we're introducing some uh, that we're, partner up with, we're partnering up with uh, uh, D.A. Gaston um, to introduce uh, in a couple of weeks. Maybe we'll invite you folks. Uh, we plan to do some pretty significant changes to the criminal justice reform uh, that's much needed here in the state of California. So thank you all. And uh, we cannot forget about that. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's, that's very, very good. Very important. We'd love to hear more about that. And anything else that you would, you would like to say before we wrap up, Miguel? Other than, uh, other than I, I think it is important that we build those relationships too. Look, we spend a lot of time in the Capitol, uh, spend a lot of time talking to, to the people around us, but I, I have learned to appreciate uh, the relationship that I have with you all and would like to continue it strong so we can get better things done. Um, that, that's what I would have to say. This is, in, and, and I go back to public banks, which we got it done. It was a people-powered movement, zero lobbyists hired. Now, now they're hired you know, a lot more than they've ever had, but so we're gonna need a lot more people to create a lot more power to get the next one done. Uh, but I'm pretty confident with your support and help. Uh, that we're going to be able to get it done. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, everyone, thank you. for watching. Please, please be inspired. I hope you were inspired by this conversation to either get involved as an organizer or to run for office, like the assembly member who is with us here. We need like-minded people in office to make these changes at all levels of the political machine in this state and across this country. So, thank you, everyone. 
Uh, we will be back next week, I believe, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time. You've been watching Stand Up, Fight Back. I'm Margo Paz, and right below me is my wonderful co-host, Carlos Marroquin. So please, everyone, have a wonderful evening. Stay healthy, stay safe, get vaccinated, and wear two masks. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs> <All right>. True <laughs> that, true that. <laughs>